This is the MG4, MG's answer to the hot hatch market with an electric offering that provides some amazing value. Priced from $42,089 drive away in Victoria, this small electric car packs plenty of punch with up to 350 kilometers of range, has features that shames others, and importantly, is an absolute pleasure to drive. So, should you stop the video right now and just go out and buy one? Well, not so fast. Because, you know, there are some things that are a bit annoying, but there's also some great things. So stick around and find out in this review. Today, we're going to be talking about the entry-level model, the Excite, which comes in two flavors, either the 51 or 64, both in reference to the battery size. The shorter range version, the 51, can do a claim range of 350 kilometers or offer the larger 64 and that increases to 450 kilometers for $48,341. I'll talk about real world range later in this video, but can we just pause for a second? At 48K, that's almost $20,000 less than a Tesla Model 3. Sure, they're not in the same class and this is a basic no frills car. But honestly, if you're looking for something to do, you're running around town and just you know, great driving, because seriously it is, this you can't be looking past. So this car I've had on loan from NG for the last week and your basic white option is zero dollars, thank you very much. Or opt for the six other paint finishes for a measly $700. Again, great value in the car world. All MG4s have a seven year unlimited warranty vehicle to load, decent charging specs and more. So let's kick off this review with driving dynamics. Getting into the MG4, the car's actually going to be turning on straight away. That's great and all, but it's also an issue which I'll elaborate on soon. In terms of the seating position, it's nice, commanding, leather wrapped or maybe fake leather steering wheel, but it feels pretty good nonetheless. And over here, you've got your 10.25 inch screen that controls most of the vehicle settings and also your DAB radio, FM, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, stuff like that. Front and center for the driver, there's a good size seven inch cluster that shows virtual view of traffic around you, speed, efficiency, battery, and tire pressures. Coming back to this main screen, you've got different drive modes such as snow, eco, normal, sport, and custom. In addition, you've got energy recovery. That's basically like regen. So you've got low, medium, high, and adaptive. And I find high definitely good. By delving into the custom setting, in here you can play around with things like eco, normal, or sport, steering of light, normal, or heavy, pedal force of comfort, normal, or sport, and again, the regen braking. Kind of seems duplicated, but at least they give you the option of tinkering around and finding a driving setting that you actually like. To get the car actually going, you've got to put a bit of gusto onto the brake to enable drive. Because if you don't, I find it actually might go into neutral or not even engage at all. And yeah, the actual starting up procedure can be a good five, 10 seconds. So the other top tip here is that if you're new to this car, plug your phone in after it's all booted up and ready to go. Because doing so earlier will just lead to frustration and you can't drive and you don't get the you know, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay that you want. MG says that this car is actually built on a bespoke skateboard platform, which provides a lower center of gravity with thanks to the ultra thin battery pack. It's like just 110 millimeters tall. And what does that mean to you? Well, if you know a can of Coke, it's actually shorter than that. Amazing, right? So with McPherson struts to the front, live independence to the rear, there's something really awesome about how this car handles. When you've got some speed, you punch the accelerator and boom, that 125 or 150 kilowatt rear drive electric motor gets this car moving quickly, very quickly. The 51 and 64 both have output of 250 newton meters of torque, which is actually, for a small thing, pretty punchy and packs a lot of punch rather. If you're shifting from a Hyundai i30 or a VW Golf, that's sort of the similar performance you're going to get. And this one is a lot of fun, especially when you give it a bit of stick through corners. It's very behaved, predictable, and for the price, it's a real joy to get behind. Steering is unpretentious, if anything, a little light, even in sports mode. But the turning provides some pleasant feedback not harsh and well absorbs bumps and knocks and things like that and I don't feel any understeer and the brake pedal mm, the stuffing of is okay it's maybe in line with the expectations if anything a bit underwhelming 
and it's going to pull up this roughly 1700 kilogram car probably enough and I think regardless those driver dynamics you would get to know them as an owner and you would uh, work around them. To say that MG has done an impressive job here is an understatement. I don't know what it is, maybe it's because of the 50-50 weight distribution, the 17 inch tyres they've chosen, or the fact is that all these things neatly st stitched together. It's a package that translates to a great ride handling with minimal pitch and body roll. In terms of safety, the Excite 51 and 64 have six airbags, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, rear sensors, and about nine active driver safety systems. So it's five star and cap rated. If you opt for the Essence version, review is up here by the way somewhere, you will actually have five additional safety features like blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert, 360 degree camera and more and it'd be nice to actually see these as standard in their entire lineup but to bring this Australian car at this price point I guess they've actually had to like uh, meet those safety requirements and will cut some things out to get a great price. Visibility out the front is pretty good to the side as well. Rear though um, you've got the center headrest in the way so if you were driving along freaking about that the passenger back there, I will get rid of it. The MG4 has active cruise control, which is okay, quirky, and good. Mm, bit of a mixed bag there. So I'm gonna to go to a freeway in a second and we'll get some speed up, uh, at which point we're gonna be getting some wind noise. So it's probably best to talk about this now. And that is actually this cabin. There's definitely gonna be a lot of wind noise picked up on the front windscreen, at the A pillars, the mirrors, and the side windows. And I found its performance to be pretty average or, you know, what read, maybe mediocre. But I forgive that. It's a cheap car. You're not gonna be getting that laminate glass, are you? Okay, let's get the MG4 up to speed. Reportedly, zero to 100 Ks per hour in either 7.2 or 7.7 .7 seconds. And in my testing, yeah. It did it. Very good, well done. So now that we're on the freeway, this is probably a good point to demonstrate how punchy these motors can be. I'll let some space in there, and I'm doing 80, and straight away we're doing 100. It, the get up and go in this car is infectious, and you uh, you won't feel that so much from takeoff. It's a little bit slow and reluctant to get up to speed. But once you've got at least 20 or 30 k's per hour, you can absolutely punch this and it'll push you into the back of your seat and that rear drive sensation, you feel it coming at you in spades. So let's talk about the maybe other big issue that I have with this car if you are a frequent, frequent um, highway freeway driver and that is, is adaptive cruise control. So it's got radar cruise control and I'll just activate it by pressing this button on the steering wheel here with a little steering wheel icon. And we can now go up in increments either uh, 5k or hold it down it does 1k per hour increments. So now that I've got it set, what I'm expecting to happen is that it's going to maintain a safe distance which it will. You can set the um, follow distance between like either one little green line all the way up to three green lines whatever that might mean and it's acceptable works well sort of but when we come up to a gentle curve in the road and i'm about to hit one right now i guarantee you that this speed which is currently set to 110 k's per hour which is what in this zone here it will actually start to slow the car down and it's it's most infuriating i don't understand why it's doing it it's uh something that even my mg doesn't do and that's like a three-year-old car which is probably a good point to talk about that this has lane keep assist and it actually has emergency departure warning on the other variants but it doesn't do lane centering so if i was to dare um, have the car try to you know take the effort of driving away from me like on this type of boring type of drive uh it won't do it it will just ping pong around the uh the lane and uh, it makes for a, a tiring experience. So essentially, I feel like we're driving a car with active cruise control from a good well, decade ago. And um, it's, it's strange to me that in the MG ZSEV that I own, it's a 2020 model, it's lane keep assist with lane centering and also radar cruise control has none of these faults or issues. So 
Um, I think it can be addressed in the future very easily just by changing out whatever hardware software um, they've chosen for this particular car and easily fix. And I love to say that fix. But otherwise, the driver dynamics of the MG4 are great. Don't let what I've just said, all those negative points, um, maybe sway you from it. Go, get out there, have a test drive because I guarantee you absolutely love it. Build quality MG4 is excellent. Touch surfaces are generally nice on the hand. You've got two cup holders up front here, two in the back, a net to hold, well, in my case, a garage clicker. There's a center armrest that has built-in storage. Seats are comfortable with, for the driver, six-way manual adjustment, and for the passenger, only four-way. In the rear, there's outboard ISOFIX points and three tether points in the boot. As I mentioned earlier in my review, there's a 10.25 inch uh, infotainment system here, but it's got no sat nav. That's only reserved for the upper level models. There's two USB sockets under here and also one in the rear. You've got wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto, which looks pretty good on this display and removes the need for in-car navigation. The MG4 does have iSmart app connectivity, but I didn't actually have it available to me for this review, but I will endeavor to do so in the Essence review video. The speaker system, well, there's only four speakers, so it's very meh. And I would suggest it's something you need to fix as soon as possible when you get it. It's tinny, lacks bass, and can't handle music very well. So this grill in the rear door here, chuck a good mid-range speaker into it, and maybe a sub under the passenger seat. Change out the fronts here, and I reckon you'll fix probably <laughs> one of my beasts in this car. For rear passengers, you can get three people across here, but to be honest, this metal seat will be a bit squashy. But at least these seats are comfy. Again, cloth, good support under thigh. Knee room is actually pretty good, and this seat's basically in my driving position. Underfoot, not too bad as well, and headroom is okay. We need to remember that this is a small runaround hatchback, which I like, and I do wish that more people would stop buying SUVs and getting into something more appropriate. Things that are missing back here include no rear seat back pockets, no vent for the rear passengers, so that has to be really nice to the people at the front so they can get the ventilation back here. And also, no pull down armrests for the passengers here, so you've only got the drink holders at the side, nothing in the center. The MG4 has got a manual lift for the boot, and in here you can get 363 liters and easily accommodate maybe two large suitcases or perhaps three carry ons. The 60 40 split or 1177 liters when the seats are down, sure, this boot is not as big as, let's say, the Model 3, but that's got a way higher price tag, doesn't it? So to be fair, this boot size is actually bigger than the BYD Dolphin, which is only 345 litres seats up or 1,130 seats down. Another unfortunate thing with this car is that there's no sub boot like you might find in Teslas and some other cars. Instead, you've got a run flat kit. Also, speaking of absence uh, up front, there is no fruit or frunk, whatever you want to call it. And under this cover plate, there's actually potential space, I reckon, for a good 50 litre bucket. Even more so if you move this battery back and out the way. So yeah, a frunk, that'd be nice. But you know what else is actually really nice and awesome about this car? Every angle, it looks brilliant. From these LED daytime run lamps, LED headlamps, a very sporty looking dynamic front, which by the way, if you go for the bigger ones, they get active cooling around there. To the side, you've got this almost clamshell type of bonnet just wants to cut through the air and it gives that aggressive stance. Sweeping lines. I remember when I first saw this vehicle, all I could think was, it just seems to be fluid and moving through the air. And you've got very sharp dynamic points, lock and unlock through the button here with a proximity key fob sort of system. You can kind of make out maybe where the battery pack is, but remember it's actually quite thin, so yeah, there you go, so be it. Coming around to the back, and remembering this is a hot hatch, so that space in the back wasn't pretty bad, was it? For a small hatchback. But I love these little light clusters here that I think just uh, busy, but good looking busy, and uh, serve a good purpose in that they actually help uh, bring the air off and move it out to the back that up so you can get all that turbulence and drag that can occur. So uh, yeah, 
if you can, you might want to think about an aftermarket little uh, spoiler up here because you get that with the Essence, but not with this model. And uh, I actually do feel it needs it. You've got the brake light up here. You've got a little tiny wiper here, which is hilariously small. But it just, this, I feel it needs to match with that. And there is plenty of aftermarket accessories that are nowhere near the price of entry, say for the Essence model. And then coming down finally, you've got some parking sensors. And that completes what I think is absolutely a good looking car. The MG4 lineup has quite a few variants when it comes to like battery pack, charging and efficiency. So I'll try my best to actually break them down for you. In the Essence 51, you get a usable 50.8 kilowatt hour battery. That means about 350 kilometers of range on the WLTP cycle. Real world, online forums and professional reviews actually peg it around 14 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. So well done to MG. Charging at home with a wall charger like the one behind me here will mean a full battery in 7.5 hours or 6.6 .6 kilowatts. That's also true for the 64 Xi and Essence versions with only the long range option getting the onboard three phase 11 kilowatt charger. Take the entry level model, the 51 Excite to a DC fast charger like this one behind me and you'll add 280 kilometers of range in about 40 minutes due to its rather small 88 kilowatt DC limit. In 2023, I'd like to see it match this one here, the 64 Excite, which can charge up to 150 kilowatts or 28 minutes from 10 to 80%, a benchmark that most car makers are using these days. Zooming back home, the 64 Excite also has the same 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger or better put, will need an overnight charge of nine hours to top it back up. Not that that's how you actually handle charging at home. Rather, it's best to run them between like 20 to 30% up to about 70 or 80%. Instead of waiting for it to be empty, it's not like a petrol car, it's different. Every day you wake up to a full charge, it's lovely. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Scheduled charging, yes. Active battery management, yep. Vehicles are low with 3.3 kilowatts of available power to run something like a kettle, a TV and a heater all at once. On a Tesla Model 3, no. And this car, yes. Absolutely amazing. And this is a thing, right? It's a common across all MG4 variants and it's very nice. And you can see what I mean. Great car, great price and goodish feature list. With service intervals every two years or 40,000 kilometers, whichever comes first, that seven year unlimited warranty, great ride and handling, and a really basic yet livable interior the MG4 Excite is a compelling car. For the price of entry, I would employ you to rethink about buying a Toyota Corolla or VW Golf, or any small hatchback for that matter. This is realistically priced at around the same point as those cars, and despite your electricity bill rising, your fuel bill will be about one quarter to one fifth. So instead of $70 per week maybe on petrol, you're going to be paying not even $15 or $20. So imagine the savings over years of ownership. Things I like to see in generation two, whenever that is. More safety features in the entry level models. A frunk, heat pump for improved efficiency of heating and cooling. And active cruise control system changed out to ones that MGs have in the other cars. So would I recommend the MG4? If your budget is set to that low $40,000 to $48,000 bracket, it's an absolute great buy and I would say do it. But maybe should you stretch a little and jump to the Essence model? Well, you have to find out in my review on the MG Essence 64, which will be up here somewhere, maybe on the end card, definitely in the description, so check those places for that. That will do it for this review and if you've enjoyed it, please do subscribe. It generally helps out the channel. Things like liking, sharing, putting a comment down below, which I do try to respond to. And if you're thinking about, well, Chris, how can I uh, support you some more? Think about Kofi, links down below. And otherwise, you'd be good and you'd be green.